Okay, so next what I want to do is look on the shaders. And we kind of covered them a little bit when we created our first project. If you remember, we did um, created kind of um, terrains and how we do on this. And overall, what I want to do, I don't want to spend too much. I want to just go over some of these very fast layers. This is will be more as we're going along and you start creating to more and more, you will understand how they work. But in some cases, I find them very powerful. Um, they apply a lot of and just as example, let me show you right here, example my side. And if we're going inside the view, right here, you can see how much tutorials was we covered just the materials, for example, was a lot of guides and a lot of they all cover materials or shaders and it's over 1500 tutorials just to cover some of these options so obviously it's a, a large field here what is um in this tutorial and discovering what i try to do it is showing your ability and push in right direction and again if you needed more in details check the exploring terrigen set for the more intermediate and mastering terrigen series for the more in-depth and advanced way how you can work with them so let's pick about this let's go back to our um, shaders and work on this shaders it's a standard name for the materials so an overlay the main things it's what point inside the project you need a kind of look different intelligent that when we add a shaders the bottom shader in our tree is a top will be on our surface as example let's go here and let's create a surface layer this is surface layer i'm going and i'm going to create as a green so you notice it's cover all other ones we'll go we'll create another surface layer and this one i'm going to create red you'll notice it's cover above so we have a two surface layer and first one total invisible because the other surface layer is covering. However, you have additional options. You can change order of the surfaces by moving up and down and you can see effect. Almost every time when you have this effect that may one effect another one, you will have options to move and modify it, like in terrains or currently in the shaders. You have it also options in everywhere to rename so it's and in some cases it's a very useful for example right here we can call this grass and right here we can call flowers so we can create a different and name them we know precisely which one is work as well in a preview you can see distribution from the top view okay let's look on some other ones what do we have it beside the name we have it options to edit internal network if we need it for this. So we can go modify here. We can also have it options to open and preview our shaders. Instead, having options here, we can preview as well. Notice you also will have an option to the paint shader over if we need it. And this is option we'll look on a specific tutorials. We also can enable measuring so we can say how long specific field work or not and we have it all additional options okay we can also move around a little bit modify it and preview so it is um, kind of preview of the material and distribution from top point view okay next we have it apply colors you can see we can modify it okay let's go for example flowers right here you can see we can enable disable and we can also apply the colors we can go all the way to the black or saturation on this currently go higher so 50 will be about equal um test color or highlighters before this also sorry right here we have a color function almost any time we can manipulate and work by assigning additional new shaders or distributions to the specific colors so we can create patterns of this okay highlighter we can apply when we need preview currently it's very bright no problem but when it's matching highlighters is very useful because we can see precisely where is they are located next we have the tabs with a specific 
distributions for this material. Currently, coverage, and right here, coverage is 1%. So let's go move to 50. And you notice how it started covering. It's not just a blending, but also if you notice, it's have a, some small distribution. So let's go preview. Okay, very fast. So and you can understand, uh, you can see it's not just a alpha transparency applied, it's apply little bit these breakup points to create more natural look. And again, it's going from all the way to opposite. So you can apply it uh, between how you want the distribution on this one. There also right here, fractal backdrop. It's what affecting. So let's go disable this and we'll go all the way down. And now you notice we have it a clean color. So we don't have those breakup that's coming true. So we can control us by enable fractal breakups to them. And we have the ability to create from larger areas to the smaller scales of breakup. So in this case, if I created a flower field, okay, and my currently flower field is the, okay, let me do this way, red color. So I want to create the red colors pop up all over. Flowers is small dots. So I will create fractal breakdown, but I don't want to create a bigger, larger scale. Okay. So I want to create a smaller. So I will bring down as a small teeny tiny flowers and maybe just add a little bit on the coverage. So on this case, when I will create my flowers cover, you can see it's add some small effects around. So you can create this way. Again, based on a scale, you can see which one is work a little bit better for you. You can invert. You can also mask by another shader, the distribution of this and invert mask and mask as a coverage. Altitude constraint is take this material and put it on proper distribution. So let me go ahead, set all the way here. We'll disable and we'll going to the altitude. The altitude allowed us to place this material on the um, specific height. We did before again in tutorials. This is will limit it. For example, our high ones. So for example, right here, let me find so we can kind of look over. So right here you can see we limited high heights we can go and we also can limit it minimum. As well, this is we'll have fuzziness. Currently, right here we have fuzzy to 200. If we set zero, it will have it one straight line. And let's bring it a little bit right here. So you can see we have a straight line. If we have a fuzzy zone set to zero, so fuzziness will be right here. Same apply to the um, limited. We also can say so just use the white, which is high for the altitude. Okay, next, let's go go to slope constraint. On this case, instead they're using altitude, okay. we can use at the angles. Again, this is um, we can go around and for example, right on side, I can check and it's slope 20. So I can increase maximum slope and set this to the 20. So right here, it's meaning it will go on a flat and won't be inside. So again, we can remove the fastness so we can preview a little bit better. And right here where I said where I want it. So if I want, for example, go on this slope, it's slope 22. We'll go set about 22 and it will cover this slope. Again, the readings on the bottom and use it. It's a, you can see usability. I wish the other terrain or environmental programs will have the same ability. It's very useful and very easy to make distributions. We have it also um, maximum slope, so it's going vertically, and we have it limited, which is going horizontally. As well, we have it slope key, we have it normals, terrain normals, or planet object normals. Okay, next we also have an additional effect we can apply it and intersection shift and those effects will look a little bit more in advanced set of tutorials. The other things also right here on a um, shaders, I want to look at luminosity. So luminosity will allow to objects to produce lights. 
you can do this if you want like underwater glowing and how say in some cases you can apply this to the snow because in some cases if you want to have this brightness on the snow almost glowing so you can enable however let me show you using luminosity on some will affect the shadows so you will start losing the shadows it some planes will look a little bit more flat because you will start losing so be careful when you use it in some case you may want to use it on the walls maybe or some painting if you import as an image or lighting elements but overall it's here and you can use your luminosity tint you also can apply it to the specifically functions okay next we have a displacement and in some cases you can very easy to simulate a very distant bush by using this um, displacement for example if i have a black and white uh, map i can go to assign shaders take my flower shader well it's cannot connect to this but take different shader assigned to this and uh, on this case like let's go right here and break up fractal we add it and on this case displacement will work with assignment so it will create those changes so we can carry in a distance you can create almost look like a bush and other ones uh, the easiest way to do if you create noise inside the photoshop blur out like about two three pixels that and it will using as a displacement function so it's create those nice bumps and on a distance it will look almost like a bush you're creating so again this is will will go a little bit more on this and advance and a smoothing effect it's applied with a blending and other effect as well so if you have it image based the smoothing will apply nicely um remove some artifacts from this okay so right here the next things what i want also showing it is add a child and right here you can see we have it flowers and we have this distribution done so let me go take this slope a little bit down right now and uh, if i apply child child will take distribution of currently material and locate it in this area so if i'm going and said as a flower select add child surface and i'm going right here enable you can see it's occupied only area of the flower area so if I want to go and, for example, create, oops, let me deselect this one and create something different color. In this case, I want mixed with different flowers, maybe. And I can also take them, select, make a little bit smaller breakout. Okay, right here, we can go inside. On this case you can see how I was mixing some other materials and now in this area I mix it one material on top of another one okay right here you can see we have it kind of blues and red mixed together so it's create different all of this it will allow you to create more accurate or complex type of material distribution natural looking um, shaders okay so next we also have this we can create a layer we have a color layer so we can create uh, shaders different type distance shader if we need it and a distance for example that's what I say on a mountain there are other things different type predefined shaders we have displacement shaders for example we can create a crater shader and apply to specifically color dreaming for this okay we can have it um surface shader applied and again all the shaders we applied we can use them inside the terrain to shape it out as well we can use it them to um color distribution for those shaders as well so we can do both ways this and we also have a transport warp shaders as well so overall this is a little bit more we'll look in exploring those shaders will look inside the Exploring Terrigen 3 tutorials.